The sport of MMA has exploded in popularity in the past few years, with the stars of the sport becoming household names. Because of the high levels of skill involved, really bad injuries are not very common, but that's not to say they never happen. There have been more than enough bad injuries down the years. Today, we're looking at the worst MMA injuries of all time, so don't go anywhere. First up, one of the more notorious recent injuries. Conor McGregor took on Dustin Poirier in their trilogy fight back in July in what was the first full crowd in attendance in around 15 months thanks to the COVID pandemic. But it didn't go as planned for McGregor, who was forced to retire early due to breaking his leg in round one, forcing a doctor's stoppage. It was a gruesome injury too. Poirier had landed a succession of leg kicks earlier in the round, just like he had done in the second fight, which some experts suggest was the precursor to the leg break. McGregor had stepped backward after a brief exchange and his leg completely buckled just above the ankle. After the fight, Poirier actually claimed he had heard the sound of McGregor's leg bone breaking, which is pretty grim. There was also speculation that McGregor had come into the fight injured, but the leg kick theory, which happened prior to the injury, carries much more weight when explaining what happened. The bout was rightfully stopped with McGregor's health the priority, and Poirier was handed his second win over the Irishman in six months. What is your favorite McGregor win? Next, we're looking at a BJJ pioneer, Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira, stay with us. At UFC 140, Frank Mir cemented himself as a BJJ specialist when literally leaving with the arm of Big Nog. The pair had fought a few years earlier, with some saying Mir was lucky to win after stopping Nogueira in the second round through punches. The second fight played out differently, with Mir showing he was no slouch on the mat either. By applying a super tight Kimura to Big Nog, who he himself is a fifth degree BJJ black belt, so might be disappointed in getting caught in a Kimura. Nogueira eventually tapped Amir, but it was after his arm had already been broken. So begs the question as to why he didn't tap earlier and stop the arm break. Brutal. You think the first fight was stopped too early? Let us know below. Legendary Brazilian Anderson the Spider Silva joins us next. Don't go anywhere. There was a point in time when the name Anderson Silva sent fear down the spines of middleweights and probably light heavyweights the world over, which was truly untouchable. By the time he fought Chris Weidman in 2013, he was arguably just at the start of his decline after Weidman had knocked him out in the previous fight. An instant rematch was ordered, as was only fair, as Silva had been the most dominant champion in the company's history up until the pair had met in the first fight at UFC 162 earlier that year. Before that meeting, the Spider was on a 17-fight win streak, which was universally recognized as an unbelievable feat. During the second round of the rematch, Silva threw out a leg kick, which Weidman checked. The force of the kick meant his foot carried on its momentum around Weidman's leg, and with his leg clearly broken, it was one outcome. The fight was stopped, and Weidman went on to retain his belt. How good was Silva in his heyday? Where does he rank in your GOAT list? Let us know below. Which brings us nicely on to the former middleweight champ, Weidman himself. In April of this year, Uriah Hall became the first ever fighter to win a UFC fight without action actually throwing a strike. In what was eerily reminiscent of what happened to Silva more than seven years previous, Weidman's right leg snapped in the same place as Silva's just above the ankle as he delivered a kick to Hull. To his credit, he tried to get up and continue, but there was no way he could. It was a truly horrific injury, and for him to be involved in two of the sport's worst injuries of all time is, quite honestly, bizarre. We wish you well in your recovery, Chris. Who do you think is the biggest threat in the middleweight division right now? Next up is Matt Mitrione. The heavyweights pack a punch, that's for sure, but this one wasn't caused by punches. When Matt Mitrione met Travis Brown back in January 2016, one of the worst eye injuries of all time occurred. Mitrione and Brown had been exchanging blows back and forth when Brown landed an eye poke on Mitrione, which appeared accidental. Once is an accident, right? But then the same thing happened again, leaving the Illinois native with one of the ugliest looking eye injuries of all time. It also begs the question as to whether Ronda Rousey's partner Brown had intentionally done Mitrione with a second eye poke on purpose. Within seconds, a golf ball sized and shaped swelling appeared above his right eye, which he later revealed he could not see out of and were not surprised. In case you're wondering, Mitrione lost the fight, turns out sight is quite important in fighting, and promptly left the organization to join Bellator. Mitrione counts a knockout over one of the heavyweight goats, Fedor Emelianenko, as one of the greatest achievements in this sport, rightly so. So, 
We're talking about Leslie Smith's ear injury next. Stay tuned. In November 2014, Leslie Smith took on Jessica I in the Verdum vs. Hunt undercard. She probably wishes she had now. The doctor stopped the fight at 1 minute 30 seconds of round 2 after an overhand right from Jessica I landed flush on the ear of Smith. The ear had been calloused and Smith had what is known in the sport as cauliflower ear, which is basically a buildup of fluid in the ear after years of rubbing up against competitors during grappling and jiu jitsu. When I landed the strike, which was a little off target, we think, Leslie's ear basically exploded with blood spraying everywhere in what looked more like a John Woo film than a UFC fight. Joe Rogan said in commentary that one more strike in that area could leave the fighter with permanent damage to the ear, which we would agree with. The fight was correctly called off as Smith could not safely continue. What's the worst injury you've ever seen? Let us know below. Greatest of all time, John Jones going to us next. Next. This one is one of those injuries you can only watch once. Jones squared off against Chael Sonnen and whilst in the middle of delivering a schooling to the loudmouth Sonnen, suffered a horrible injury to his toe. He dispatched Sonnen in the first round after a flurry of punches and whilst being interviewed noticed the state of the big toe on his left foot. The gruesome injury had occurred earlier in the round when Jones had stuffed a takedown from Sonnen and rolled his toe in the process. As he noticed the pain during his interview with Joe Rogan, the champ told us that he hadn't even noticed it at first. Imagine the adrenaline that must be flowing through your body to not even notice an injury of that magnitude. The toe was almost hanging off. The fight wasn't stopped because although Jones hadn't noticed it, the rules state that the fight should only be stopped if the injury impairs a fighter's ability to defend himself, which this clearly did not. Who do you think is the greatest of all time? Give us your top three below. All the way back now to the TRT Vitor days. Vitor Belfort was a scary human being back in the day, and anyone who got in the octagon with him, especially in the juiced up days, deserves a medal. At UFC 43, that person was Marvin Eastman. Unfortunately for Eastman, who finished his career 18 and 15, Marvin was not in Vitor's league at that point in their careers, and in the first round, Vitor went to work. Belfort drops Eastman with knees, then goes to town on the beast man, thoroughly opening him up and leaving him with one of the worst cuts in UFC history. Still to this day, almost 20 years later, what are your best memories of Vitor? Back to UFC 189 in 2015 now, stay with us. One of the all-time classic UFC fights took place at 189 in Vegas back in 2015. Robbie Lawler faced off against Rory McDonald and the two legends delivered a classic. The whole fight was an insane back and forth slugfest with the final round delivering the injury which ultimately stopped the fight. McDonald had walked onto a straight right from Lawler with the two men seemingly exhausted. It was a case of whoever gets the best connection next wins at that point. Lawler dropped McDonald and Rory, visibly shattered, could not get back up. Lawler had broken the Canadian's nose and also his dreams of walking away with the W. This one was also the co-main of a historical evening in which Conor McGregor went on to secure the interim title against Chad Mendes. As always, thanks for joining us today and remember to stop by again next time for some more interesting revelations.